Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick from Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is Wednesday, and it is October 26th. It's time for our daily devotions. We are making our way through the Gospel of Matthew. Today we're starting a brand new chapter, chapter 18, and starts out with the question of who's the greatest, and let's see how Jesus answers it. Beginning at verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. If your hand of your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you do not look down upon one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hill and go and look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth. He is happier about the one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault, just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have, you have won your brother. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you. But my Father in heaven, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am in, with them. Okay. So, like I said, we're starting out with this question here of, of who is the greatest. And um, the point here, uh, you know, when this question is asked, is that Jesus then shows um, a little child, and uh, he talks about the importance of the little child. And you know, when when you think about what does it mean to be a child, you think about someone who is dependent and helpless. And this is how God wants us to look at ourselves in light of of, of Him. That that we are the ones who are dependent upon Him. We are the ones who um, are helpless if not for him, that, that he takes care of us as his children, that he loves us as his children, that he leads us, that he guides us, and, and most importantly, that he saves us, that we are incapable of, of saving ourselves. And it's through, you know, the, the ministry of Jesus, through the work of Jesus, that, that we are saved and that we come to have a relationship with the God of the universe. And, you know, Jesus kind of bridges this between um, the parable of the lost sheep and the brother who sins against you, really emphasizing here the, the horizontal dimension of the faith with the, the brother who sins against you that, you know, you, you go and you show him his fault. And then there's this process in Matthew 18 for, for reconciliation, right? Just like in the parable of the lost sheep, it's also about um, the lost sheep outside of the fellowship, outside of the communion, being reconciled uh, to, um, to the church, to the fellowship, being brought back into the fold. So this is all happening here in Matthew 18, that we, we look at ourselves as little children, we understand that we can be like the lost sheep, that we understand that someone can sin against us or we can sin against them, and there is a process for reconciliation, that this is important to God, that, that his church be a place of, of harmony and love and, and forgiveness, uh, as well as understanding our dependency upon God for all of these things, that, that we're not to exalt ourselves and to think how we can get ahead in the church or how we can 
um, impress others, but 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 really it's it's through this humility which comes through confession, right? That we confess our sins, that we acknowledge our sinfulness and uh, our our inability to keep the law, um, our failings. And in this way, we receive absolution from God. We receive mercy, forgiveness, grace, and, uh, and reconciliation, as we're reading about here today in the Gospel of Matthew. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, so uh, announcements for today. It is Wednesday, so youth night um, and then choir practice are happening tonight at 6 and 7.30, respectively. Mahjong and grief share happening tomorrow, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. This coming Sunday, it is uh, Reformation Sunday. So we have a special service planned. We hope you can make it out as we uh, recall the contributions of Martin Luther in terms of uh, proclaiming the gospel. And uh, we'll be hearing about the original letter that Martin Luther wrote um, uh, on the day, October 31st, that, that he wrote to this bishop and, and how that squares with the original account of, of Luther nailing the theses to the door. So you'll definitely be learning some things if you come and join us this Sunday, or you can tune in and watch us via our live stream. And then don't forget, on October the 31st, the day of the Reformation, we are gathering here to study the teachings um, and the expositions of Scripture by Martin Chemnitz. So this is going to be another exciting week here. Our, our Bible study will be halfway through at the end of uh, this Monday night. We're having, we're having good turnout. We're having great discussion. Not too late to jump in, so please come and, uh, and join us. And then Women's Bible Study will be held uh, on Tuesday, November the 1st. All right, God's blessings on this, the rest of your Wednesday. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in ministry this week. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another daily devotion.